Thank you for joining me, I'm Alex and I want to talk about iRobot today. And not really because of like the company, but I really do like their products. So <clears throat> obviously um, it's kind of a luxury item because you don't really need a $600 vacuum. You kind of can get away with a $100 vacuum just fine. It's just that they make things easier, which is pretty huge in terms of, you know, full employment. That may not be the case for not so full employment, but seeing that most of the jobs that are being affected by the current situation are people that wouldn't have bought a robot vacuum in the first place, um, I think it's kind of a wash, but it's hard to predict things from here. So iRobot makes autonomous vacuums. Um, they vacuum your house by themselves, more or less. Obviously, uh, there's difficulties with that. They also um, started making um, robots that mop your floor. Um, and um, they, they have various products and they're obviously always innovating. And so um, I'm a huge fan of their products, but I don't own them myself yet. Current price $64.73, which gives them a market cap of just over $1.8 billion. Dividend is zero, and again, I don't expect that to change anytime soon, so it's not really worth talking about. Revenue $1.2 billion, slightly up. Earnings $85 million, slightly down, which gives them PE of 41, and uh, forward PE that is not listed. Um, I would assume that even when the predictions were made, which is 1231, that um, they didn't really, or the numbers are from Reuters, and they didn't really make a prediction because the company is fairly small and it's hard to predict things for small and growing companies. <clears throat> so... Um, not a fan of not having a forward PE, not a fan of a PE of 41, but um, if you assume a hugely growing market, then um, 41 can almost be justified. Um, I don't really see that here, though. Total assets, $921 million, which is up pretty significantly. Total liabilities, $269 million, up not as significantly. That's barely over 10% there. Total stockholders equity, $652 million, up 20%-ish. So um, overall, things are going in the right direction in pretty much all metrics. Um, earnings slightly down doesn't concern me that much, even uh, especially when it's... Um, it, it's giving them a PE of 41. So it's not like um, it makes a difference between a PE of 20 and 25. It makes a, P, a difference in a PE of 41 and 40-ish. So um, overall, I would say that <clears throat> because it's a luxury product um, and because there is much uncertainty in the current situation, um, I would be worried about the next couple of years. And as I have said previously about this company is, uh, in particular, is that there is competition and there is growing competition and there is competition on the lower end of the price range. And all of that is going to work against iRobot and overall prices coming down for electronics always pretty much is always working against them as well so um, overall I would say that the PE of 41 with uh, revenue that is growing by less than 10 percent earnings that are shrinking um, no dividend not really a huge moat here they have products but they also have competitors and um, I don't know how far they ha they are ahead of the competition, and I think all of that combined spells a huge problem for them. So, with that said, um, obviously for a dividend investor, there there's nothing here, and there's not going to be anything here for a while. For a growth investor, the growth is really not significant enough to really get into it for a growth investor. Um, 
the the product and the sector and uh, the company sound like a growth uh, company, but I really don't think that the current revenue growth is very significant. I don't think over the next two years-ish, the revenue growth, if there is any, will be significant. And so for a growth investor, I also don't think there's anything here. For a value investor, um, the earnings shrinking is a problem. The PE is a huge problem. And um, the balance sheet actually looks pretty amazing. So uh, overall, I would say that for a value investor, the PE is just too high to justify uh, a buy here. And so I cannot recommend this stock to anyone at this point and um, that's that's pretty much the end of that one that's it for me for today if you like this video make sure to subscribe i'm coming out with more videos every day before market open i hope you have a successful day